Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Uh, in today's session, we are simply going to explain that how you can understand the structure of heart. And such things, understanding the structure of any organ of the body is actually quite easy when we go through the, st uh, if the, uh, go through the picture. So in this session, we are just going to explain that how it becomes so easy uh, to label the diagram of a heart and with labeling you can just uh, uh, understand and remember the structure of the heart. So let us see the picture now. So we all know that uh, biology, some people find it so difficult to understand and learn the things basically, isn't it? So my suggestion is simply that whenever you are studying the subject biology, uh, try to understand the things, try to learn the things with the help of the diagrams. So if you are doing it in this way, really the subject becomes quite easy. Right. So in today's session, we are going to explain the same uh, tip or uh, uh, same thing with the help of this particular picture. Basically, heart is a pumping organ. Right. It is a part of a circulatory system. What is the function of this pumping organ? It helps in the circulation of blood in our body. Right. And of course, it is helping in the purification of this particular blood. How? By it pumping it to the lungs. So basically this particular organ is involved in two basic parts. Number one is the circulation of blood in your entire body. And secondly, uh, collecting the deoxygenated blood and transferring it to the uh, lungs for its purification. Right. So considering these particular basic uh, functions of the heart, let us see that how basically it is uh, the structure is actually made here and how each part is functioning over there. Right. So here as we are saying that it is involved in the collection of, uh, uh, of uh, deoxygenated blood from the body. Isn't it? So if it is collecting the blood Definitely there must be some vessel over there, there must be some uh, 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 some vessel type structure which is collecting it, isn't it? So in this uh, human heart, the particular function is performed by the structure called as the vena cava, right? Now there are two different types of vena cava here, the one which is known as the superior vena cava. Number one, what is written here? That should be labeled as the superior vena cava. Now, this superior vena cava, it is actually helping in collecting the deoxygenated blood from the upper parts of the body. That means we can say from the cephalic region or from the head side or towards the anterior side of the body. Uh, and after that, it is pouring the material or just pouring the deoxygenated blood into the internal structure. Beside this now the left out body parts that means the uh, bottom region of our body from there the blood is collected through the another vena cava which is known as the inferior vena cava. We can label this number two part here as the in, uh, inferior vena cava. So this is how the two things are now labeled. These vena cava actually collecting the blood from the veins of the body and you all know that veins are containing the deoxygenated blood. So this is how this uh, deoxygenated blood is now targeted towards the pumping organ that is the heart. Now where is it going to be poured inside? It is going to be poured inside the first chamber which is uh, towards the right side of this structure and here we have numbered it as number 3. So this particular chamber that you can see here, this chamber is actually, uh, it is the auricle or you can call it as the atrium. So this is the right atrium here. I'm sorry. It is right atrium. I'm writing short form here for the right that is RT and atrium or the auricle could be written here as shown to you. Fine. Now from here, what is the next thing? This blood is then further forced towards or it is transported into the next chamber here that is a ventricle. But of course these two upper and lower chambers they are separated from each other. They are of course separated but there is an aperture in between which is actually uh, connecting the two chambers. Fine. And this chamber is actually controlled by the valve. 
it is a tricuspid valve here which is controlling the flow of blood from the right atrium towards the next chamber and this particular uh, uh, valve here that you can see here we are showing you that is numbered here as number 4 uh, in general cells, this valve is connecting the atrium or auricle with the ventricles. So, it is basically known as the uh, atrioventricular aperture. But of course, in this case, it is controlled by the tricuspid valve. So, we can write it here or we can label it as the tricuspid valve. So, now further, the blood is transferred to which part? It is to the next chamber which is uh, which can be labeled here as the right ventricle now we can see that this right part of the heart whether it is atrium or it is the ventricle it is receiving the uh, deoxygenated blood so in our heart the right part is actually meant for collecting the deoxygenated blood from the body right atrium receives the blood from the vena cava and then the ventricle uh, it is going to supply, it is going to transport this blood to the lungs. Uh, of course, for what purpose? For the, deox uh, for the oxygenation. This deoxygenated blood is transferred to the lungs. Over there, what will happen? By the diffusion process, carbon dioxide will go into the, uh, into the outgoing air or in the expired air. And of course, that oxygen present over there is going to be uh, diffused into the blood. Now the blood is further, it is, um, uh, it is uh, simply oxygenated, so it is returned back to the heart. But how this transferring and it is receiving back is uh, taking place? It is through this particular structures. Now here you can see this valve here. This is, although it is not numbered here, but we can say it is uh, uh, this part. Let us make it star here. This star is actually the pulmonary valve. You know why it is known as the pulmonary valve? The reason is because this valve is transferring or it is connecting this right ventricle with this particular uh, vein. This uh, vein, I'm sorry, artery. So this artery is actually known as the pulmonary artery. Number 6, what is uh, present here? It is nothing but it is the pulmonary artery. Why this particular artery is known as a pulmonary artery? The reason is the blood vessel which is transferring the or which is transporting the blood from heart to different uh, uh, body organs. They are known as the arteries. Right. And the blood vessels which are collecting the blood from body and is transferring it to the heart, those vessels are known as the veins. So in this case, this pulmonary artery is carrying the deoxygenated blood and is transporting it to the uh, lungs where of course the oxygenation is taking place now after that oxygenation what will happen that uh, oxygenated blood has to be reverted back into the heart so that it can be circulated in the entire body fine so uh, since that uh, vessel is collecting the oxygenated blood from the uh, lungs and is transferring it back into the uh, into this, um, I'm sorry, into the heart. So that vein must be known as what? It is known as the pulmonary vein. So you can see these veins here. It is known as the pulmonary vein. Uh, pulmonary word is used uh, with respect to the lungs. The parts which are associated with the lungs, they are uh, they are actually called as the pulmonary parts. Fine. So this pulmonary vein is carrying this oxygenated blood back to the back into the heart, and further it is drained further into the uh, next chamber, which is no, labeled here as number eight. So number eight is what here? This number eight is the left auricle. It is the upper chamber uh, of the heart which we are labeling as the right, uh, I'm sorry, left auricle or it is called as the left atrium. Now from this left atrium or this left auricle, blood is going to be transferred to the next chamber. Fine. Uh, um, of course, it is uh, not an uh, easy flow over there. It is passing through the valve here, which is of course controlled by the uh, by the bicuspid valve here. Fine. So this particular valve, which is bicuspid uh, here, uh, that is known as the mitral valve, or it is known as the 
by cuspid valve so this is how the blood oxygenated blood is now transferred into the next chamber uh, which is this next chamber now this next chamber is numbered as 10 here and we can label his, it here further i'm sorry so this chamber is going to be what it is the left ventricle this lt i'm just writing here for the left so left ventricle so now uh, you can just go in sequence and then you can just remember the parts of the heart as well as you can find out the various uh, the flow of blood or the circulation of blood how it is taking place in the human body fine now from here this oxygenated blood it is to be transferred to the uh, all of the body parts isn't it and the circulation it occurs through the uh, aorta now this huge artery aorta is a huge artery which is further uh, getting split into or it is uh, forming many branches called as the arteries so uh, of course it is transferred in a controlled way because uh, pressure is to be maintained and this particular wall which is controlling the flow of blood from ventricle to this aorta is called as the aortic valve so you can label this particular thing here as the aortic valve beside this now this uh, huge artery it is called as the aorta and from aorta many arteries are going to arise which are further going to connect or which is going to circulate this uh, uh, oxygenated blood into the different body parts so here you can see that how these structures if you just understand the things with the help of the uh, structure at the same go you can actually understand the parts of the uh, diagram or parts of the particular organ uh, their function their structure and its overall uh, sequence that how it is functioning so this is the uh, this is the internal structure of the heart but of course uh, at sometimes in your exams uh, some extra uh, this um, uh, labeling may also come over there for example this outer boundary isn't it this particular boundary or this membrane here is known as the pericardium membrane so sometimes even that is asked over there so we can label this boundary as the pericardium membrane and of course now you can understand that uh, how the labeling should go just go in order don't do it randomly because when we go randomly generally it happens we miss out certain things by mistake so avoid such mistakes and the loss of marks because of such mistakes you should go in a particular sequence and therefore we have just numbered the things and we have gone in particular thing now when we look at the diagram isn't it uh, with all labels over there it seems to be complicated so the suggestion to you is simply that uh, go through it in a way uh, when it, there is a unlabeled diagram and then you just uh, go in a sequence from where the flow of blood is taking place and for that of course you need to go through the theory as well as diagram together once you go through in, in this way and you revise it for just two three times uh, you can definitely uh, get the mastery over this so further in the next session we will study about certain other problems or we can deal with the certain other problems which you may face uh, uh, and which can actually help you in preparing for your exams so till then thank you so much